Live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another wonderful, amazing, fabulous, snow-filled Ask an Engineer. It's me, Lady Ada, with me, Mr. Lady Ada. We're here at the Ada Food Factory, downtown Manhattan, in Soho, where we do all the design, testing, manufacturing, documentation, shipping of all the electronic goodies you know and love. Well, maybe not today, shipping, because it's uh, we're under a foot of snow. But other than that, it's not it as, It's not as bad as they said it is. Not so bad. Like, we were... Like I had, we had to walk 15 miles through the snow to do the show tonight. We made it. But we made it. It's fine. I had to find one of those big animals that you cut open and get inside of it for the warmth. Yeah. A and Wall Street banker. Yeah. Um, we've got an exciting show for you tonight. Got all sorts of goodies, new products. It's not out yet. Videos, tutorials, and more. What's on tonight's show? Glad you asked. On tonight's show, the code is Nor'easter because that's the word that everyone keeps saying on the radio and the news out here on the East Coast, so that's what we did. It's uh, 10% off in the Adafruit store all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Eastern time tonight or when I remember to turn off the code. Saves 10% off on everything except for Ada Box and gift certificates. It supports us, an open source hardware company in New York City that manufactures electronics. Um, we didn't need to get loans or venture capital because you all buy stuff once in a while, so please do that. Thank you. Yep. Show and tell people around the world showing and sharing their projects. Lady Ada will go over those. Pack the bell bag will stop by. Read your emails and letters to us. Time travel, look back in the world of makers, hackers, artists, engineers, events, and more. Made in New York City, some factory footage and more. Here from Adafruit. 3D printing and some 3D printing news this week I want to talk about. Ooh. New products. We have a top secret this week. We'll answer your questions in the Discord chat at adafruit.it slash Discord. Go sign up. We'll give away something, all that and more on, you guessed Dun, it, da, da. it's Ask an Engineer. Yay! Okie dokie. We well, do this thing. Yeah, every week. Uh, let's um, pay some bills. Don't forget, that's code. And when you add stuff to your cart on the Adafruit store, it's unlike most other carts, if not all carts, um, you get free stuff. It's true. What do they get? If you order $99 or more, you'll get a free Permaproto half-size breadboard. This little PCB allows you to take your breadboard project and make it permanent. That's the PERMA in PERMA-PROTO. You get that free with every order, $99 or more. $199 or more. Uh, you get free UPS ground shipping in the continental USA. This is a good, high-quality shipping with tracking numbers. You'll actually get it when it like, goes out to you and you don't have to worry about like the postal service. $299 or more, you get a free Circuit Playground Express. It's our all-in-one development board for beginners, uh, People who are not quite beginners and experts. You can use it with MakeCode, you can use it with CircuitPython, you can use it with Arduino. It has a bunch of LEDs and sensors, capacitor, touchpads, all that good stuff. <clears throat> we have like almost like 100 projects in the learning system for it. Yours free with ten, your order. 10 out of 10 from Hackspace Magazine is one of the best, low cost, easy to learn ten. coding. 10 out of 10. That was the highest it can go. And at every order level, you get all the previous things for free. So there's no reason not to buy more stuff. You can get more free things. Yep. Okay. Uh, some other stuff. Um, right now, uh, just a reminder, so there might be some weather delays, and you'll get a notice when something ships that there's weather related. But anyways, uh, for UPS Ground, as Lady had mentioned, we also have Postal and DHL International. Um, that got our international game on because it just sails through, prepaid. It's complicated to do Especially this. Especially to Europe. People yeah. love DHL. It's great. But it's just great. like sails through. Um, same day shipping in New York City after... Um, the show before 11 a.m., and it's pretty much every day before 11 a.m. If you're in New York City and there's a zip code that we can do same day, same day happens there. Okay, um, show and tell. People around the world showing and sharing their projects. We do this it's true. every Wednesday. People around the world have things to show. We had a lot what of people. What did they show? Okay, we had people from Adafruit. We had JP from Adafruit West. He showed off uh, a heat shrink trick. If you get three quarter inch heat shrink, you can heat shrink your Gemma to make it, like, um, stealthy. And um, it was for an Adabox 7 project, but since some, not all people have their Adabox 7 yet, we're not going to say exactly what project it's for. And uh, there's a bunch of Adabox 7 guides that JP did um, almost all of them. So check that out if uh, you have your Adabox 7. Or if you don't care about spoilers, you can go check them out now so you know what you're up against uh, when you get the box. Pick Your Dragon, Phil B. Has an It's Not Out Yet, Don't Ask. It's uh, a revisit of the Cupcade. He's revamping it to work with the Pi Zero and the new Raspberry Pi 3. Um, it hasn't been updated since the Pi 1 came out. Known Pedro showed off their foot switch, which does not need a spring. Uh, it's their 3D printed Hangout project. We'll show the video for that later. Scott has been working nonstop on CircuitPython 3.0. Uh, if you're a bleeding edge engineer, 
and you're interested, check out 3.0 Alpha. We've been doing releases almost every week. Um, but in his spare time, he made is working on a toaster oven that runs CircuitPython. So he's replaced the control board of his oven with a custom SAMD51 uh, Cortex M4 board that controls the LCDs. He showed off the LCD segments working. So to be fair, everything that Scott has in his home runs CircuitPython. Pretty much. That's what he wanted. CircuitPython world. Wanted. We're just living in it. Yep. And uh, he's revamping the Adafruit Circuit Python MicroPython Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Yeah, we'll talk about it soon. We'll talk about it. Um, sign up if you haven't. I will remind you again to sign up. And there's a GitHub now. If you have ideas for what you want, you can open up issues or submit a pull request for links that you yeah. think would be good for the newsletter. Remember to say that again when we get to that segment. I'll, I'll put a note. Remember yeah. to say that again. Say it again. Yeah. Okay. Remember. Um, Isaac? who has shown off some cool Circuit Playground Express projects, built a tilt trumpet in MakeCode. Um, simple little project. As you tilt it, it changes the pitch and the volume, and then your buttons actually make tones. It's just like a... It's one of those like extremely fun, annoying music makers that um, kids just love so much. And he said MakeCode was really easy, so that's good. Uh, Bill from AT Makers on a road trip. Road trip! Everyone loves road trips. Uh, he's hacking AT Jacks into assistive tech around the country, and he built a sip and puff box multiplexer for somebody who uses Morse code um, with a sip and puff machine. And he made it so you can, he can select with a very long puff which machine he wants to control. Yeah, watch this show and tell him. Bill's going to send us a video. This person who he helped out with this wanted this minor change to an assistive technology device for seven years, and they didn't do it. So they're like, OK, I'm going to make it myself. So. And we have the jacks that Bill asked us to get these jacks in the yeah. store. So, so you can we'll, play the vi we'll have a video probably from Bill next week, but watch the show and tell us so you get an idea of what this is. Um, Lon hasn't been on for a bit, but came back, has a new CR10S 3D printer. Never heard of it, but it's apparently enormous. He printed a um, sci-fi zapper gun all in one piece. This gigantic pleated vase um, all in one piece. It looked really good. Um, and is making a dry box with Eva Dry. It's, it's like gun box, silica gel heater thing. Um, and then he also, for his dry box, um, set up a temperature and humidity logger that uh, logs to Afrit IO and said, said that worked out really well. We saw that live, low humidity, so it's good. And then is making an OBS switcher with buttons and a foot switch using a Teensy or an Itsy Bitsy, I guess like maybe one or the other, and uh, showed off his own 3D printed foot switch uses a binder clip for a spring. So it's like everyone's making foot switches this month. This is foot switch month. It is. Oh, people love feet. Um, Matt, Aurora, Malcolm, and Rory have a, um, a bedroom that has a lamp, but this switch is really hard to control. So they made, it's a cool idea, they made gigantic soft pads with tinfoil on the back that when you touch them, changes its capacitive touch, connected to a Circuit Playground Express, and um, changes the bedroom light. In the little circuit plug express, it's small, but those 10 LEDs can be really bright, uh, can light up the entire room. So they've updated the um, lamp, so you don't need to control this little switch. You can just put your hand on this big touch pad, and it will change the colors. And, and they're writing it in make code, and they're doing great. Good work, uh, all of y'all. It's like a team effort. Um, Billy, for his uh, friend, made a... Uh, Mickey Mouse ears with Gemma M0, some WS28112 pixel rings, LiPo, and it goes through all these effects, and there's like a tactile switch, and when he switches it, the ears do different things, and they look super cool. It's like the, was it the light parade they have? They have a few things, but I think the the ears too, there's ones that like can synchronize, but there's always stuff you wanted to do, so he made his own. Yeah, this is pretty sweet. Um, and then uh, Dan came by and is working on a custom charger for little Cosmo bots, little robots that people like to build stuff with. He's making yeah. a custom charger so they can fit in a smaller case together because there's two of them. Okay. All participants on the show and tell get an as seen on the show and tell sticker. Email support at Adafruit.com. We'll send you one. Part of our Adafruit live series of shows. Um, we're still doing some fun stuff with Instagram stories because uh, Instagram's becoming more like. Uh, Facebook, but I don't know if it gives all of your information to everyone yet, so just be stay frosty. Go watch those third-party settings, everyone. But anyways, a lot of people use Instagram and the stories thing lets us do video when we do stuff, so check that out. Instagram.com slash Adafruit. Yeah. Um, sometimes we have behind-the-scenes stuff and more. Um, JP's show, uh, he has one tomorrow, and then he also has one, of course, 
um, every week, but he's doing the Ada Box unboxing soon, and he's going to be on Make Live tomorrow. But um, this was JP's software defined radio show. He did this one last week. This is a super sped up version. He moves fast. Um, I just sped it up even more. So this is a quick overview. You can see it on youtubecom Adafruit, and of course every yeah, Thursday. Yeah, we sell these in the store, and they're so much yeah. fun. If you're interested in radio, but like you, you know, you're not sure if you want to get a ham radio license, um, good start. Which you need to transmit. SDRs are a great way to listen in on radio, and there's like a lot of really cool, fun projects you can use with these little dongles, and they work on Mac, Windows, and Linux. Um, yeah. And there's like new projects every week that come out with them. I, it's one of my like my favorite toys that we have in the shop. Yeah. Okay. Back to mailbag. Every week, read these emails that folks send to our entire company, our state of the fruit meeting, we call it. Um, this week, um, this is a long one, so I'm just going to say go check out the mailbag section on site. I just shall summarize it. Basically, this person is really happy where you were doing the Heathkit power supply, some of the past things. Um, we had Tony D on. It was a New Year's um, one. But basically, just lots of fun memories. This is an engineer who used to do stuff, and now they're doing it again because you're bringing back wonderful memories. Yay. Which is kind of weird because these are like chemical things in our heads, but you can, by, by seeing something, can make those things work. That's cool. Yay. It's a fun hack. All right. Um, Nice mailbag, thank you. Yeah, we have some Code Plus community, some things around the world from um, CircuitPython, MicroPython, Python related. This one, I grabbed the video online. So do you remember a couple weeks-ish ago? Time moves weird, but maybe it was like a month. It was a month ago. Um, we bought one of the NumWorks calculators, and this is yeah. a calculator that- grab it? No, it runs Python, and uh, it yeah. runs MicroPython. It's like a little, it's, an oper it's a calculator operating system that's based on MicroPython. Yeah. It uses, you can use it like a graphing calculator, but you can also run a Python interpreter inside of it. Yeah. Like you can code it with Python with the little keyboard. So uh, someone, I knew this was going to happen because we're contacting the company. We're like, this is kind of cool. We have some ideas. So someone took it and put it on a Pi board and then made a robot out of it. So I just want to show that video real quick. So here you can see that's the calculator. That's why I didn't need you to get it. And then there's board. It's like, hey, look, yeah, there's a board. Yeah, it's a Pi board. Yeah. OLED, and then it looks like maybe some It's like, hey, email. gonna stop doing calculations, gonna run to Python now. Yeah, so you can see it's just running Python. Yeah, time to Our run motor Python. speed. Yeah. And then it's like, all right, well, let's let's execute this thing. And then it's like, all right, well, got everything going. Check out the screen. And then your calculator is now your robot. So it'll detect when it's getting close to something. Yeah. I just thought it was cool. Neat. Okay, um, check out the dates for PyCon. Mm -hmm. We are going to be there in some form and fashion, so some of the team, and also there's a special secret giveaway thing. Yes. We're done. Okay. Um, Adafruit Daily, this is what I was talking about before. Oh, this is the thing you said remember. Yeah. I'm going to so, remember it. So here's the deal. Um, we're, we're kicking off our... So we have lots of newsletters with Adafruit Daily, and the reason why we did AdafruitDaily.com is because we didn't want anyone to ever say, oh, Adafruit, spam me. Yeah. Because we can't. We don't. We don't do that. So you go to adafruitdaily.com, and that's where we send newsletters. We have a biohacking one. We have 3D. We have electronics. We have wearables. wearables. And we have Python Micro for biz. microcontroll. Yeah, yep. microbiz. Python for microcontrollers. Yep. And so um, we revamped it. So you can contribute to it. Um, we're going to have a blog post and everything, but it's on our GitHub. And every week, links go out. We have um, some special things planned soon. I'll talk about that. But um, already, when we just started talking about it again, like, hey, here's this resource. Here's this thing. Um, thousands of people. Are, are reading this so yep. jo join in the phone we don't spam you we don't sell you anything you, you have to go to the site and sign up and like you have to say you yeah. really want it we're not going to sign you up by default if you buy a circuit python board you will not get signed up no. you have to go and sign up on your own yeah so do it it's worth it yeah. okay um and then here's all of our boards that run circuit wow. python but i thought it was neat um this is kind of cool so um unlike me you have living relatives yeah. and, and people that know you that are related to. So uh, this was interesting. Your sister sent an email and said, hey, check it out. My son has to use Circuit Playground Express in and school like, and use oh, Mika. Oh, man, Auntie Lamar, look at this. He has to deal with me. He has to deal with me when he visits. He also has to deal with me at school. I think you had said, hey, you know, you know, pick up some coding or something. Whether you want to do it doesn't matter. Now it's curriculum. Yeah. Now, now I'm you in your it. head. Now you got to do it. <laughs> no. So anyways, they're, us pretty cool. they're using Make Code and Circuit Playground Express. This is in Oakland, And looks like California. it's on like a Windows 10. That's kind of neat. Mission accomplished, right? That's what a good ant should do. A good ant should go and learn electronics, design stuff, and then ship hardware, and then eventually... Uh, wait, let's see. He is about as old as Adafruit, sort of almost. It's right in the... Yeah. Yeah, okay. 
That's cool. He's a little older. All right. So um, next up, um, if you want in Discord, so we're going to do another round of cool blanket graphics. Um, this is kind of like the one that I guess if you had a tattoo. Um, but we have these things like here's Circuit Playground and here's Blinka That's doing cool. things and like here's Blinka on the board and like these are the Blinkas we did before and then um, we did these versions of the MicroPython one. And so put it in Discord or you can put it in the YouTube chat or we'll, we'll be doing a blog post. If you have ideas for like what Blinka the snake can do, um, let us know because we want the, the snake to have fun. Um, Blinka uses a computer probably like a camera and probably listen to music and things like that. But think about what a nice Python snake would want to do as activities. So we'll have some neat graphics. Okay. Um, speaking of, so this is from the Pi folks, the Pi Foundation. Um, Nicholas Toll is going to be here. And, and Toll, Toll. Is going to be here, and we're going to do a video. And um, we're going to ask about Moo. Moo. We're going to ask about all the cool things that are going on with Moo. You wrote a book. I'm going to ask, can that please be the logo forever? That's a cool logo. And uh, we're going to be interviewing him, uh, just showing everything that goes into Moo, some of the features that are probably coming up, how the plotter works, all that stuff. So that's coming up soon. That's my that's my news about this. I'm excited by it. Okay, did you want me to say the thing that you said remember? You, yeah, you should remember that thing. Um, so, oh, I'm still going to remember it. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to, what, what did you want to say? Well, I was going to tell tell people they can submit to GitHub the, the newsletter. For the idea. newsletter, Yeah. 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 So submit ideas to the newsletter. Yeah. Uh, you can do it by issue, by pull request. So if you made a Circuit Python project and you want us to feature it, just send it as a pull request. Yeah, we'll have issue. a blog post about yeah. more of this stuff because it's a little. Sometimes it's hard to figure out how yeah, GitHub works. Yeah. I always have to. Re, I have to like re-remember it every time. Dude, yeah. I, I just have like a list of the Git commands. I can't remember this yeah. stuff either. Okay, time travel. Look back in the world. Makers, hackers, artists. Engineers, we have some news and videos I want to do this week. Um, first up, what's new? Happy birthday, Albert Einstein. General theory of relativity. Yay, the theory of publishing. relativity. Yeah, not bad. Everybody's been trying to like disprove this every for a long time. This had, this was this was a good song. Okay. Well, it's over. It's 103 years old. Yep. Wow. So if you like your some expanding universe models, this kind of works out. If you like gravity bend in space, kind of works out. Cool. Nothing better yet. I mean, quantum, mechan mechanics. quantum mechanics is just like, yeah, this is weird. We mm -hmm. all agree it's weird, but at least you can kind of repeat the experiment, but it's weird. Yeah. Um, entanglement always gets gets me weird. Uh, well, nice work. Yeah. Um, other things, and since you all are watching videos online, you're like this. Twitch right now is doing a marathon. Wow. For the um, 90th, it would have been Mr. Rogers' 90th birthday. Okay. And it's the 50th anniversary, I think, of the show. Mm-hmm. And they're streaming... All um, 886? 886 episodes. Wow, that's a lot and of it episodes. started like uh, yesterday. Cool. And uh, I'm going to play the trailer for the Mr. Rogers movie that's coming out. Um, but I do want to say, like, one of the things about Mr. Rogers, like, I wish we had a little bit more Mr. Rogers in the world right now. Yeah. Um, because one of the things that I think Mr. Rogers was good about was talking to kids who needed to hear something important, but it was really for adults too. Um, the quotes that you always hear is like when a tragedy happens and, and especially now because there's a tragedy every second unfortunately or at least the news lets you know about it or yeah. whatever pocket supercomputer you have he said you know look for the helpers like when there's and that was that's a good thing for kids like there's always someone willing to help the other thing and I think it was the story that he told someone and he said um, a social worker gave him a piece of paper and he would like read off this quote I'm, I hope I'm getting the story right but the, the, someone told him, if you knew everyone's story, you, you, know, you can understand them better. And I think about that when we have a company, employees. It's like everyone kind of has something. You never know like, how someone got there. Even when um, you know, you're, you're in the line and someone's freaking out or something like that, I think I used to think, like, oh, man, they're just like freaking out. Now I'm just like, something must have happened. Yeah. And this is how it's expressing itself. So um, you know, anytime, I think, when you just like, need a dose of empathy, watch a Mr. Rogers. So... It's definitely like empathy, it's straight, it's, empathy therapy. Yeah, and if you're on Twitch, you, you know, you're probably use, you're in a video game and you're shooting people all the time. It's super fun. And just yelling, yeah. And just yelling. But you could also just take a quick break and look at some Mr. Rogers. So there's a, there's a movie coming out, and this is a big deal. I have one of the DVDs for one that they did this Michael Keaton one for a while ago. It's yeah. kind of rare. But this is a new movie coming out. So I wanted to play the trailer, which I think is fine on YouTube because it's like a trailer. Well, we'll do the it. The whole point, yeah, it'll be fine. So I'm going to play this. A television program for children made its unauspicious debut on station WQED in Pittsburgh. Its host, Fred Rogers. Mr. Rogers? Yeah. I want to tell you something. What would you like to tell I like you. I like you, my dear. 
Thank you very much for telling me that. He take all of the elements that make good television and do the exact opposite. You have Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Low production values, simple set, unlikely star. Yet, it worked. Hello. I've always felt that I didn't need to put on a funny hat or jump through the hoop to have a relationship with a child. He was always trying to get a message across in every show. A week on death. What does assassination mean? On divorce. Some people get married and after a while they're so unhappy that they don't want to be married anymore. He was radical. I know everyone says that, but he was radical. They didn't want black people to come and swim in their swimming pools. My being on the program was a statement for Fred. A neighborhood was a place where, at times, that you felt worried, scared, unsafe, would take care of you. He had a singular vision of kindness and love. Love is at the root of everything. All learning, all relationships, love or the lack of it. Children have very deep feelings, just the way everybody does. There must be times when you do feel blue. I'm not feeling blue right now, though. Me neither. <laughs> Won't you be my neighbor? Well, I suppose it's an invitation. It's an invitation for somebody to be close to you. The greatest thing that we can do is to help somebody know that they're loved and capable of loving. Won't you please, won't you please, please won't you be my neighbor? Okay, so if you don't have summer plans, um, just watch this movie like 10 times. It should be probably required watching right now. Like, please just and watch... All, and all 868 episodes. On well, those maybe not so much, but maybe the movie. Ooh, it looks really yeah. good. Yeah, and I think this will be because it'll reintroduce a lot of young people, because PBS is a little different now yeah. than it used to be. It's like on HBO or something. Yeah. Um, you need, like, Hulu or <laughs> iPads or something. Um, okay, so um, speaking of, because this is all kind of related, this is how I do the show. Yeah. It's all connected. No, I know. It's National Puppetry Day. <gasps> Is it? And, and you see all those puppets behind us? And, and one of the inspirations, I can tell you 100%, when I wanted to have puppets with Adafruit was Mr. Rogers. Yeah. Because what a powerful thing for um, adults and kids. And I also thought about Jim, H- uh, Jim Henson because he had said the Muppet Show was really for adults just to have something to do with their kids together. That's why it was like, they have like Phil Stiller on there. And it's like, why is Phil Stiller doing jokes for kids? It was all kid friendly, but it was like someone that the adults wanted to to, to see in here. So um, that's where Circuit Playground comes from, the Mr. Rogers world, the Sesame Street world. In fact, when we launched Circuit Playground, it was like, oh, this is like Sesame Street 2.0, the Elmo for electronics. So I'm going to play one of the Circuit Playground episodes. Okay. And this is one of my favorite ones because it's you and uh, it's Waz. Waz, friend Waz. So um, here's Adabot, here's you, and here's Waz. D is for diode. We're up to... We're doing O soon. Soon. We're almost through this alphabet. Yeah. We'll get a new alphabet soon. Bot. I was just adding some protection to this circuit. Interesting. Why does this circuit need protection? Well, a circuit needs to be protected for a couple of reasons. One example is if I were to connect a battery to this incorrectly, then electrical current might flow in the wrong direction and damage some of the components. Oh no! How do you make sure that doesn't happen? Well, we use a diode. By placing a diode at the circuit's power input, we ensure that the current can only flow in one direction, the correct direction that we've designed the circuit to work with. So, a diode 
diode is like a one-way street for electrons? Exactly. The electrons can only flow through the diode in one direction, and they have a really hard time going back the other way. The stripe indicates which end of the diode acts like a wall to block the electrons. Diode protector of circuits. Yes, but diodes do more than just protect circuits, Adabot. Oh, what else do they do? Well, some diodes emit light when we pass current through them. We like to call these light-emitting diodes, or LEDs for short. Maybe you've heard of them? LEDs? I love LEDs. I thought so. So that's what D stands for in LED. D stands for diode. That's right. Well, it looks like this circuit's all done. How about we go test it out? Adabot, are you coming? Sorry, Waz. I'm an electron in a diode. I only go in one direction. Ow. Ow. Oh, Adabot. Let's go. So that's our entire series that we're up to now. Um, we have more, we're filming more, and you can expect more puppets. Back. Yeah, we added Minerva. Minerva's gonna be in one soon. We also have Blinka, so that's hey, happening. Blinka, Blinka. Over there. Well, we have P coming up. Yep, okay. Um, some other stuff, it's Women History Month, so check out our blog. Um, one thing is, um, I think there was an interesting article today they had pulled, probably the internet, and they said, who's the most admired women in tech? And they said, Siri and Alexa. So, uh, Jeez. yeah, come on, everybody. We got to fix that. Dang, awkward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what it is. Okay. Um, National Robotics Week is coming up pretty soon. Um, we'll have some noise about that on our site. Um, and then some open source hardware news. I have breaking news. So there's an open source hardware certification 2.0. It has um, some uh, backing by the Sloan Foundation. Michael Weinberg is the president of Austral. Oh, yeah. This just happened while I was wow. going live. So I'll, I'll have that like next week. But I did want to mention... We're an Oshawa hardware supporter, and we are a sponsor. So there is a open hardware summit in like September 27th at MIT. Uh -huh. Your old stomping grounds. Yeah, maybe we'll go. Yeah, we might go. Um, but anyways, if you want to sponsor it, you can. Get some, um, get some swan la chow chow and dun noodles. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so that's coming up. Yeah, um, we'll go. Next up, on the big board, um, we have some guides. We have 1,418. And when you get to, um, you can leave the, the painting one and the um, badge one for the big photos. But yeah. what, what's on the big board this week? Okay. So I think the 3D, oh, shoot, I can't remember. Can you hide it? Yeah. Sorry, there's the, there's the U, hidden UV uh, message reader. That's a project from John Park. So that's using a gem and a UV LED to read hidden secret messages. Um, Erin did a 3D printed flower lamp shade, which like it, it has this lily uh, lamp and it, I guess you got these light up bulbs and she made like a, a flower shade, flower lamp shade for them. Uh, so she goes through how she modeled it. She's like doing a lot of 3D modeling lately and 3D printed it. We have a Gemma M0 vibration sensor motion alarm. This is a simple project using a vibration switch, a Gemma M0 and a piezo so that when something gets moved, um, it makes a loud noise and tells people like, hey, you move something you're not supposed to move and it will alarm you. Um, we have a Circuit Playground Express TV Zapper. This is basically making uh, a TV Be Gone-like uh, board. We, we sell the TV Be Gone kit, but maybe you have a Circuit Playground Express. Well, it has an infrared LED built into it. You can um, use the Circuit Python code to turn it into a TV Zapper to turn off or on and the LED. Um, I wrote this guide. It actually goes into a lot of stuff. It goes into how to use a logic analyzer to get data, how to parse data with a Python notebook, uh, compress data, and use eval in Python to um, uh, load data from disk into memory without having to actually load all of it into memory. You'll, you'll read the guide. You'll read all about it. Um, Sophie Wong did a really cool laser cut con badge with a yeah. Circuit Playground Express. We're going to go to the net. There's well. bigger photos of it. Yeah, it's like a cool snake and then like has compassive touch pads. This is a cool design. Yeah. Um, a really neat job she did. And then... Erin also did an ever-burning flame painting. I'm going to play that video. Won't you want to play that now, or you want me to continue? And then continue, and then right when you're done. So don't okay. talk about that one. I'm not talking about that one. Nope. Uh, Itabox 7. 
This is a spy security theme 007 Ada Box. If you got your Ada Box, you can go check out this guide. If you haven't, maybe you want to wait. Um, Ada Boxes are shipping. Uh, they're shipping out uh, this week. Uh, it may take another day or two for your order to ship, but uh, you'll get yeah, that very shipping. soon. They are shipping. But you can only sign up starting at AdaBox 8, so sign up now. AdaBox.com. Yeah. Do it. And uh, this week's 3D Hangouts, the USB foot switch controller with CircuitPython with a Trinket M0. We'll show that video as well. So now we can go to the video. Yeah, here's that video. I'm going to just play it. Play it. Add animated lights to your artwork using NeoPixels and Circuit Playground. A beautiful capacitive touch button makes the lights fade out or flare up. See the full tutorial on the Adafruit Learning System. And remember to subscribe for more fun Adafruit projects. Okay, and we have some made in New York City factory footage. You know, sometimes people like do really make stuff in New York City. We're like, here's a million more videos of us doing this we every have day. Proof. So here it is. This one has audio, but I can make a noise too. Bum, 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 Okay, um, we also have some ones that um, just says how we... This is some prototypes. Do some prototypes. See. These are some upcoming Feather M4. Yeah, this is actual speed, because we have... Dan, super fast. We have um, iced coffee here on tap. So everyone is just completely cranked out on caffeine, and this is why we get a lot done. So we get seven PCBs at once, and then we do one part at a time. We, we place them all, yeah. put them on this uh, metal uh, sheet, yep. and it goes into the oven. And then this is just some um, thermal camera testing, so we can see when we're testing something if something's getting hot. Yeah, this test or something's weird about it, so yeah, it so gets like, hotter well, than it should. So we're like, well, maybe we can just like use what we have from nature. Yeah. Just find all the things that grow here at Adafruit. <laughs> and craft a, uh, yeah. Yeah. Boom. a thermal camera. That works Spark. pretty well. And uh, this is a selective solder machine. Yeah, making some motor wings. Yeah. So if you like Terminator 2, it's kind of like that, but um, the uh, evil robot's not trying to kill Sarah Connor. It's the main difference. Awkward. But besides that, it's like identical. Yep. And uh, we also have, of course, this is not what it looks like tonight, but this is um, outside the window. This is what the pick a place to fall asleep to. Yeah, right now it's just snow, it's just white. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, I have some Adafruit IoT news. Okay, what's new? So first off, we're almost done with our latest video, the IoT series. It's true, I'm editing it. Yeah. Well, not editing it, but helping with editing. Yeah, you're putting notes and stuff. It's like editing. Yeah. It takes a village. And uh, we have the service called Adafruit.io, and then a bunch of folks are like, I would pay money because I want to do more than the free tier. 
They were and like, maybe they also I want to run. Us. I want to. Yeah, that's that's a good. They're that's like another good reason. You know, what, do you know what they're like? They're like, I don't want this to be a sunsetted data service that goes somewhere and then changes I'm, its name. And I'm finding out later gets sold that my 50 million friends were compromised because of something. No, no, no. So uh, it's nine bucks a month. Not gonna bucks a month. So uh, it works a little stuff. In fact, Lon showed a great example. He made an Internet of Dryer things. A cool dashboard, but um, here's yeah. here's the latest news. Okay. Um, we have 97.8 million inserts of log data over the last seven days. That's a lot. Wow, and then, in seven days? Yeah. Amazing. And then we have um, about 37,000 online feeds. Pretty good. 140,000 feeds total. Um, I remember this was 10,000, then 20,000. Yeah. That's almost 40,000. Um, if you have issues, we have Adafruit.io in the forums. And then if you're still using version one of the API, better get to version two, because version get two on is it. better than one. But okay. I guess we still support it. But still, you want to go to two. Yeah. Okay, 3D printing. Um, I have some 3D printing news, sort of, kind of. Okay. And I also have um, these videos with uh, Noam Pedro. But the first one is Michael Weinberg in the news twice tonight. So he posted this on a said He's the lawyer for Shapeways, but he's yeah. also the president of Oshawa. Oh, uh, yeah. And uh, he did this. This is mostly interesting to maybe like me. Um, and people who like law and you know, we trademarks. Just, like, we like go on pacer at night. Yeah, like, we're, we're yeah, losers. Lady, Lady <laughs> and I are like we're, we want to be lawyers when we grow up um, to fight for justice. So this is neat because it's a transparency report on the type of trademark and takedown requests they get. Yeah. So if you're wondering like, oh, your shape ways. So like, what is what happens when someone like uploads Mickey Mouse? Well, somebody has to deal with that. That's probably yeah. Michael. So this is interesting. Over the last year, they had um, more number of requests for takedowns but the the interesting thing is 16 percent of the accusations of trademarks infringement were withdrawn um 50 of the accusations were withdrawn after being challenged so, so and then four of the dmca counter uh, notices were submitted by users were su successful hmm. so the interesting thing about this it means like most of the time someone's like i really own that or like some company thinks they own that or like it's a fork i made a fork yeah and they're like hey like this is like not yours so that they said it, the number is potentially exceedingly high, but still, that's a, you know, yeah. even even sixteen percent negotiation is pretty good. Yeah, and it's neat because this is not like images. There's still some things that are being worked out in the world, like yeah. the shape of something, the look of something, who really ends up. So it's interesting. So th it's a cool transparency report. If you like this, if you host any type of content at all, you should look at this. It's, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, okay. So it's rare for anyone to publish it either. No one does. Really, really no, email Michael. I'm just like, hey, I really like this. And, and he's like, yeah, like this is, a, it's important. It, but it is for folks who have to like maybe manage large communities or have content that people are uploading. There's safe harbor provisions and all that. But that doesn't mean you can't just ignore stuff. But uh, if all companies did this, imagine if like a Facebook or like Google or like an Amazon had a transparency report, like here's all the times Alexa was like doing, or like, <laughs> wouldn't that be cool? Or like, here's the times when you, that quiz that you took. Maybe it wasn't what you thought. So anyways, here's the foot switch video. Hey, what's up guys? Today we're building a 3D printed foot switch. This is a USB controller that can be used as a keyboard, so it can free up your hands, which can be pretty useful. I'm using Adafruit's Trinket M0 to simulate a USB device. This tiny microcontroller runs CircuitPython. It connects over USB and loads as a flash drive. This means all of the code and libraries are accessible on the drive so you can make small edits and quickly iterate. The Adafruit HD library simulates USB devices so it can send key presses just like a mouse and keyboard. Originally, I was going to use an existing foot switch but decided to design and 3D print the entire enclosure. This makes the project more affordable and allows for more customization. The components are going to be secured with screws and the top cover just snap fits over the top of the base. I 3D printed the parts on an Ultimaker 3D printer using regular PLA filament. All you will need to build this project is the Adafruit Trinket M0 and a micro switch. We'll need two wires to connect the micro switch to the Adafruit Trinket M0. Here I'm using 30 gauge silicone covered wires which are pretty strong and flexible. We can attach these wires to the leads by tinning them with a bit of solder. This will make it easier to solder the wires to the normally open and common leads. Once that's wired up, we can work on the Trinket M0. I wired the common lead to ground and the normally open connection to pin number zero. And with that, the circuit is pretty much done. Two long screws will secure the micro switch to our 3D printed bracket. And this will make it easier to mount the micro switch to the base. The bracket is placed over the mounting holes and secured with additional machine screws. 
I suggest tapping the mounting holes on the Trinket M0 before securing it to the bottom base. The Trinket is secured to these standoffs which elevates the Trinket to accommodate for a micro USB cable. Then we can install the top cover by lining up the hinges. Just firmly press them together until they click into place. The USB port on the Trinket is easily accessible through the back. As a USB controller, you can pretty much make this do whatever you want. So I'm using this project to do overhead photography so I can use both of my hands and trigger the camera at the same time. If you'd like to build your own, check out our guide on the Adafruit Learning System. Link is in the description. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more DIY projects from Adafruit. Okay, and then we have this better video. This is the this is the dual, dual color. Yeah, yeah watch cool. This. Those are handy because um, they close all the Toys R Us's, so toys have been banned, so you just print them out now. Okay. That's what I heard. Um, so, 3D Hangouts, there was the Fusion Lego project, so you yeah. can watch that start to finish. They're making a little yeah. Lego block system compatible. The other 3D things. Hangout, you can look at making the foot switch. Yep. Writing code for it. Zippy. And then you can watch how they made this lamp. Yes, yeah, is Aaron's lamp project. Yeah, so that's where she modeled the lamp and then that's what we're doing, showed how like, to create something over it. This is cool. All the time, yeah. There's nothing like this. So. Man, I want to learn fusion. Um, okay, a little reminder. April fifth, third, third, third. Yeah, April third at nine ish is the uh, Ada Box unboxing. Um, so watch that, and you can watch it even if you didn't get an Ada Box. But you'll be like, oh my god, I see an Ada Box. So I want to join in the fun. That's coming up soon. Um, the other thing before we get new products is we have a new product newsletter. This is the only one that it's it's buried in your account settings. We never send it. You have to click it and like say yes, I really want this. Make an account. It can't be a yeah. guest account, so make an account and then sign up. We get asked, we're like, hey, like, I want to email every time there's a new product idea. We so will totally we email you. We do this you. once a week, so that's that's the, which is you know that's the thing. Um, so if you want it, you. you can sign up for it. Um, codes more Easter. Ten percent off. Yeah. Okay, lady, let's do this. New, 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 new. All right. Um, this is more of a reminder. These are coming in stock all the time, so sign up and get one when you can. Pi 3B Plus. We got a bunch. We got, we're going to get more. We're getting more, more, more. So sign up. Yeah. Uh, we don't know the exact date, but it should be within yeah, a week or so. Yeah, get all the time. Okay. Next up. What's this? This is a product update. This is a very popular NRF52 Feather. People love this. Um, it runs Arduino. It's an, a Cortex M4. Um, NRF52832 chipset in an FCC CE Telex certified module, feather format, or so our feather wings. Um, people love it. Battery powered. It, we've made it even better. Uh, we've improved the power usage. We're going to get precise numbers very soon. But historically, the uh, USB to UART um, chip was powered off of the 3 volt regulator. We've now made it self-powered off of USB, so when you disconnect USB, that chip will be um, shut down completely and you'll be able to get even lower power. I think we're gonna have like a, I think it was like three milliamps uh, quiescent before and it'll, we'll take it down to under a milliamp when you're in sleep mode. We'll get you exact numbers. But I know some people were waiting and wanted um, better power uh, um, measurements on this device, so I'm letting you know that we have done the update and uh, this is now updated, it's a lower power. Otherwise, it's equivalent. Okay. Next up, what's this? This is another update. So um, this is one of our older bonnets, a speaker bonnet with two uh, Max 98735s, I think is the part number. Um, we've updated it. If you go to the next photo, dun da da It now has the header assembled on the bottom with our slim SMT header. What this means is that you don't need to do any soldering at all if you want to use this. 
Um, we used to ship it with the header that you'd have to solder on, but now it just plugs into your Raspberry Pi, uh, three, two, zero, use it as is. And then if you're using our, um, the speaker, uh, the, the dual speaker set, it just plugs right in. And we also have a terminal block you can solder in if you would like to solder something in, but you don't have to. It is a solder-free update, otherwise equivalent. Okay, next up. Okay, now it's time for new products. So this is a servo and PWM bonnet. Um, this features the PCA 9685, you know, my favorite PWM GPIO expander chip. We've had this in a hat, um, but uh, the hat is a little bit big for a Raspberry Pi Zero. So we've now made it into a bonnet shape, which is the same shape and size as a Raspberry Pi Zero, plugs right on. It works with a Raspberry Pi um, uh, 320, any, anything with the 2x20 header. I'll get my demo together so we can show this off live. Yeah. So give me a second. Oh, you sneak peek of it. Oh, oh, well. yeah. oh boy. Not too surprising. Um, I'll plug this in. And while it's okay. booting, I can chat about it. Live, live servo. Um, so this is the PCA 9685. It's an I2T to PWM GPIO expander. Um, that means you don't need to worry about precision timing. Uh, Raspberry Pi runs Linux, and Linux, it's, it's not good at precision timing. It's very fast. You can do, like, HDMI. You can do MP3. You can do a whole bunch of stuff that an Arduino or CircuitPython board can't do. But what it can't do is um, precision PWM timing. So this chip does it all for you. All you have to do is send it um, the pulse widths you want, and it will do it automatically. So this is a little demo just showing controlling two servos one after the other. Um, power to this uh, bonnet comes from this plug over here. You give it a five volt power input and you saw the little LED turns on to let you know. Um, you can drive 16 servos, uh, each individual, and you can stack multiple bonnets if you want. Um, you can set the different I2C addresses, so you can just connect a whole bunch. Basically, it's like a really easy, low-cost, great way to connect servos. Also, it can just do generic PWM, even though we're using it for servos, um, because people tend to like those for robotics and motor control. It's also great for just like plain LEDs. You just want to PWM a bunch of LEDs, or maybe you have like some of the robotics or RC control. This will definitely do the job for you. It can run up to 1.6 kilohertz uh, frequency PWM. Um, it's got a polarity protection here, so if you connect it backwards, you don't have to worry about it. All the GPIO are broken out as well, and there's a little spot for an optional capacitor. But other than that, it's super easy. You get four blocks of four, uh, up to 16 servers at a time, and uh, you can get turn in. Works great. We've got Python library all ready to go. It's super easy to use this for your robotics projects. Okay. Leap, the star leap. of the show tonight, besides uh, you, Lady Edinor. Community is uh, blinking stuff. It's things long are, stick. Things are blinking. They're blinking different colors. They're glowing. This is a PCB bar NeoPixel strip um, with side lit LEDs. It's 120 LEDs <coughs> per meter, so it's a lot of LEDs. It's exactly a half a meter long, so you get 60 LEDs because it's 120 LEDs per meter, and there's half a meter. Um, I can hold this up because it's kind of yeah, actually... Do you want to go to the overhead or do you want to go to us? Well, let's go to us first so I can show the... That's nice. It's got a ra overall length. rainbow wand. So you can see it's side lighting. So if I show it to you, it's just straight on. You can't no see rainbow. it. No rainbow. 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 So this is very, very skinny. Um, you can, in theory, cut it. There's little, like, cut lines, but you, you'll have to use a saw or something. It uses FR4. So it's a little bit flexible, um, which means that if you're using it, you probably want to support it on both ends. But it will, you know, it, it does stand on its own. So maybe if you're making like a rod or, or a decoration or under lighting and you don't want it to bend or buckle, um, this will stay very straight. Yeah. This is a kinder, gentler version of Jedi where they just, they just have rainbows. They're like, hey, let's just be cool. Let's not get in galactic fights. And if you want, you can connect these end to end. I mean, like, you know, you'll have to remove the cable and solder them, but you can make a very, very long yeah. uh, stick so let me show this yeah one. what is that being driven by it must be like a giant supercomputer to do all this stuff right oh no it's we got not. a little trinket m0 running a circuit python and um oh that was circuit python yeah this shows you yeah you know because it makes, it makes it easy to run the demo so you can see the stick yeah um if 
you look closely, you can see there's a little capacitor. Wait, hold on. It's very hard to zoom in. There's a capacitor, the standard, you know, power ground and NeoPixel signal. These are SK6812 you know, NeoPixel compatible. Yeah. Side light, but yeah, very skinny. Very compact. Perfect for the um, new Barbie Burning Man playset that's coming out. Totally. And then on the end, you've got this, um, they've soldered these connectors on, but you can remove them very easily. You don't have to use them. Um, yeah, it just works with anything that expects NeoPixel. I think it's, you know, it's great if you just want, especially if something that you want rigid, you don't want to have to worry about it um, bending or twisting. Yeah. Um, you know, we were, uh, me and Dean were looking at, you know, he's, he's building like a, a guitar synth type thing, and he's like, well, I need something very skinny. But Yeah, this is perfect for musical instruments. It's something that'll fit into a very yeah. small spot, and you don't have to worry about it. Like if it's a, the Flex PCB, they can bend very easily and they can crack. This is much more durable. So I like this stick. It's a nice stick. So it's a stick of lights. Okay. And with that, Lady Ada is, you guessed it. That, la, was, la, uh, that was new product. New, 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 new. Okay. Ready for new product recap? Yes. Okay, new, new, new. new. So we cap. We got the Raspberry Pi B Plus, new, faster, more Wi-Fi, PoE possibilities. Have in the store, pick them up, sign up. We've got an update to the NRF52 Feather. This NRF52832 uh, modularized Feather, basically the same as before, except we've improved the power usage. It now uses much less power. Check out the uh, product page for details. We've got the update to the Adafruit speaker bonnet for Raspberry Pi. Pretty much the same as before, except now it comes fully assembled. So on the bottom, instead of having to solder the 2x20 header, it comes surface mount soldered onto it, plug and play, speaker action. We've got a servo in PWM bonnet at 16 channels of PWMs for LEDs, or we prefer servos. We've got little plugs and everything, uh, polarity protected DC jack or terminal block. A uh, very easy way to add PWM or servo support to your non-real-time Linux computer. And finally, this beautiful PCB bar stick is 120 LEDs per meter, a half meter long of NeoPixel, super slim, but sturdy FR4 PCB could be really great for edge lighting or decorating or your uh, Burning Man project. That's what we got this week for new, 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 new. All right, that was good. You did a good job with that. Um, here's the code. Because you're like, I want to buy this stuff, but I want to save like 10% off. So that's what you just use that code. All right, um, well, because uh, everyone's so good, or uh, I just watched enough Mr. Rogers to... To make up for it? <laughs> make up. Everyone here is good. Folks that aren't here are so good, though, sometimes. Um, we have some top secret. So uh, here we go. Um, don't ask. It's not out yet. From Native Vault. Revision F. We think this is the last revision of the Metro M4 Express featuring the SAMD51. We're taking our time, but we're doing the right thing. We want to make sure that whatever we release is really good. So uh, it does say beta on it, but we think this is the final. I think that's a good idea. Because like this is beta hardware. There's no, you, there's no denying it. I'll tell you why this is a particularly hard one. There's a lot of pins and a lot of hardware peripherals on this chip. And it's a bit of a struggle to make sure that we expose as many as possible. Like there's this PCC, there's multiple I2Ss, there's two DACs, there's a lot of ADCs. But there's, there's two ADCs, so we want to make sure we have some from each. ADC input, like rather than have one multiplex or two multiplexed, um, you know, all the circoms, um, there's like Q deck, there's a quadrature code, there's just all sorts of stuff. So we're going through and just trying to make sure that we expose as many pins as possible because we're limited. You know, we have to, we're, we're fixed here with this uh, Arduino compatible layout. Okay. And, and then Phil B made a cute little MOSFET. Yeah, on the back. this is our little tribute to MOSFET. Oh, MOSFET. Um, but yeah, this is happening. This is our prototype. We just finished these today. Yeah. So we're going to test them and hopefully get in the store soon. soon. Okay. Or if not, it means because we found something and we wanted to fix it. Back in the vault. All right. Well, uh, we're going to answer some questions. So uh, let's yeah, question do that. Time. Well, to answer the questions, you have to ask questions. To ask questions, you have to do it in Discord. So go to Discord. Yeah, it's adafruit.it slash Discord. So if you're, if you're somewhere else and you're like, I got a question, you got to go to Discord. No, you can't yell it at your wall. You can't. The walls are listening sort of kind of depending on if you got the new Amazon wall. You can't go to Facebook and yell it there. No. You can't call okay. your mom unless your mom's on Discord. So uh, let's see. Someone wanted to know, oh, can they use the Adafruit discount code for resellers? No, because um, you already have a discount. Well, there's 2,000 of them, and they'd have to like get the code and then make it work, and then they might not be able to do discount codes or something. Yeah. So. 
That doesn't work. This is for um, you, the retail customer. Okay. Uh, let's see. Next up. There was a question. Oh, can, for the lightsabery thing, um, <laughs> can, yeah, can, can, you bend it, can you bend it and cut it? Like, how does it work? Well, you can bend it a little bit, but it is rigid. So it's not recommended to uh, bend it. And you can cut it, but you'll need to use a saw, like a thin coping saw. Okay. Or, or some other cutter that's like can go through FR4 because it's like it's full thickness FR4. All right. And then um, how did you measure the power stuff for the uh, update on the Bluefruit thing? Using the Monsoon power meter, which we've got lots oh, we, of videos. We around. have lots of that on Descalator. Yeah, know? we use the Monsoon and Kate Town's actually been working on that. He's going to get measurements uh, shortly. I think we got it down to like, it's under a milliamp, I think, in sleep mode. Okay. Do you have any suggestions on the Pi TFT 2-inch graphical errors on a Pi Girl Zero? We're looking to that. Something happened. We're not sure what. But um, you can go in the forums and, and subscribe to the thread. We're going to figure out why suddenly in the last week it's not working as well. Okay. Very sad. We'll figure it out. Do you happen to recall some of the new things in Raspbian for the new Pi? Some of the things that are nice. Um, I don't think there's a lot of Raspbian. This is a window. It had the screen scaly thing that I remember. It's not the uh, RaspberryPi.org has a good list of. Yeah, RaspberryPi.org does the best. I know for they had to update for the firmware because I used an old SD card on this Pi Three B Plus and it didn't work. So they definitely upgraded the firmware. Okay. Uh, the new Feather Fifty Two does UART chip actually turn off when the USB Five Volt is not connected? Yes, it actually turns off okay. because it used. It used to be powered off of the three volt regulator, which were like, that's the correct way to do engineering. But it turns out it's better to have it self power using its own internal regulator, which yeah. then is shut off when USB is not powered. All right. Uh, considering an update to the new Metro and size it like a mega with additional pins. We are considering Like a it. mega Metro. We are considering it. You couldn't do that with a SAMD21, but you can do it with a SAMD51 because they make a TQFP100. But we're going to try to get this Metro done yeah. first, then the Feather M4. Uh, the Itsy Bitsy M4. You see, there's, there's, there's a lot. And then maybe yeah. we'll get to the Omega M4. But we do want to well, do a Mega version. I mean, here's the thing. Like, look what we're doing. We're totally going to do something Dude, I'm like doing that. Look more at this. hardware than anybody look else. Look at all the Circuit Python running, running stuff. All the stuff runs Circuit Python. So, yeah, like, you could probably, yeah, like, it's. Set yeah, of control. Yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Okay. Um, are there any changes on the Wi Fi for uh, the Pi B? Plus? Yeah, the, the Wi Fi is faster and it also has 5G and is in a 10, so you get a little bit better performance. Okay. All right. Well, since everyone asked a bunch of Raspberry Pi B plus questions, you know what we're going to give away tonight? A Raspberry Pi 3 B wow. plus. Holy smokes. So I, I took, Wait. No, I took one of these out of stock just for this. I have one, too. You have well, a Well, this is a sealed one that's not, has not it's been... It's clean. Yeah. It's once, clean. Once we touch it, it gets gross, but... Yes. Uh, that's a little <laughs> thing. Okay. So um, how, how did they... How did they win this? How could they win this? If you would like to win this... Amazing Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus, the newest, the bestest Raspberry Pi 3. All you have to do is call the phone number, which we'll have on the screen shortly, and answer the three questions. The first question is, what's your name? Second question is, where are you calling from? And the third question is, <coughs> what's something you're building or you want to build? You can even just say, I want to build this Raspberry Pi 3. So, like, one question is kind of a gimme, but you have to know your name and where you're calling from. Yeah. And you have to be the first caller on the phone it's number. Not too bad. Is that so hard? Yeah. We used to actually have engineering trivia questions, and like that was we, we quickly figured well, out that that it, made it. Chat rooms are never are never the same, so I yeah. I'll get angry. And, yeah. All right. Well, um, the the phone line's open. So okay. Call this number. Just gotta call this number. You're gonna get Raspberry Pi up. Plus. Yeah, that's a big deal. I'm gonna pick up the phone. I'm gonna ask you those questions. Don't hang up on me. I mean, you can, but then you're not gonna win. Yeah. You sure to? Let me see if that. Call. Oh. Nothing gets folks calling like a Pi 3B+. All right. Do the, yeah, do the same. Hello there. You've reached Ask the Engineer. Hello. Hi. Hello. You've reached Ask the Engineer, and you're the caller, so you're the winner of a Raspberry Pi. Yay. Yay. What's your name and where are you calling from? Um, I'm Ryan from California. Hey, Ryan from California. What's a project you're working on or you want to work on? Um, I'm working on the Pi Girl Zero. Wow, well, now this you can build an even bigger one with your Raspberry Pi 3, yeah. which we're going to send you. All you have to do is email support at adafruit.com, S-U-P-P-O-R-T, at adafruit.com and say, hey, it's Ryan from California. You're the only Ryan in all California, and we're going to send you... PID 3775. 
3775, tell them product number 3775, and we will send you out this exact Raspberry Pi 3 B+. Plus. It's amazing. Congratulations. Cool, thanks. All right, well, have a great night, and uh, when you build something fun, come on Show & Tell and show it off. Yeah, cool. All right, thanks, Ryan. Have a great night. You too. All right, bye. All right, well. Good work, Ryan. I worked out. Ryan was successfully able to answer those three questions. See? Not too hard. Not too hard. You can do it. Okay. Well, uh, guess what? That's our show tonight. Yeah, we did it. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, don't forget the code is Nor'easter. 10% off. A different store. All the way up to 11.59 p.m. or when I remember turn the code off. Um, we're here every week. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching the show. Thank you, our Adafruit team members here at Remo. Thank you, the Adafruit community, most of all. Thanks for the folks who pick up a kit or something, because we'll just keep doing this till uh, we can't, but uh, your support helps us. Yep. Keep um, it going. Yeah, and uh, that's it. We have a lot of stuff coming up soon, so you guys are going to enjoy it. Yes. All right, well, that's our show. Um, here's your moment of Zener, and we're going to play some music on the way out. Good night, everybody. Hi, everybody.